That is indubitably very stupid. <laughs> Hey guys, this is my review for Pacific Rim Uprising, the sequel to a movie that I honestly never thought we were going to get a sequel to. The first one came out in 2013, and while it did have a somewhat good reception, the money that the movie generated wasn't the best. The possibility of a sequel was kind of left in doubt, but in the end, the movie does end in a definitive manner. It did end with them closing the gate, blowing up the kaiju world and everything kind of just being cool. So what happens with the sequel is it takes place 10 years later. Really, the world is still trying to rebuild from the Kaiju War. There's people who are living in the slums of areas that were affected by the Kaiju blood. And then we meet John Boyega, who was Idris Elba's character's son that he just so happened to never talk about in the first movie. So what we see is that he's kind of a swindler, he's a scam artist, but he's a survivor. And then he meets up with this little girl who built her own Jaeger. Even though it's a tiny Jaeger, it's... I'll stay right off the bat. The little girl gives you a good impression, like she's strong and whatnot. However, the whole aspect with the kids, because she goes to this academy to fight with other kids, that whole storyline is pointless up until it is forced to matter in the final 20 minutes. I'll say that every time the kids are on screen, I just pieced out because it was either awkward, extremely forced, or just plain boring. John Boyega, however, carries this movie. Even though he is doing it for a failing cause, he is charismatic as hell throughout the whole movie. He's almost like what Will Smith was in Independence Day. He's able to say lines that just shouldn't work, but because it's John Boyega saying them, they somehow do. What we find out is that there is these competing Jaeger robot drone companies, which just so happen to be Chinese, so this whole movie is just completely trying to appease the Chinese market. But then there's this weird sort of conspiracy going on, and admittedly it takes a turn that I didn't expect. It's both actually not bad, but also really bad at the same time. Mako's in it, but it's not a very good cameo. What's weird too is, even though it's been 10 years, they try to make her look like she's 30 years older or something. It's really weird makeup. But now comes down to the fighting. That's what matters, right? Well, it's directed by Stephen D. Knight, who actually has never directed a movie before. He was, however, part of the team for Spartacus. That was his show. He didn't really direct an episode for it, but he's done directing for other TV shows, but more so he's been a showrunner and a narrative purpose guy. He's never really been a directing dude. And you can tell because he's literally taking pieces from other directors and putting that into this movie. There are so many J.J. Abrams Dutch angles in this film, and unfortunately this transitions over into the fight scenes which are very subpar. In the first one you felt the weight of these things. These things move slow, but that's because they were titans, they were massive creatures, and every time they hit, damage was done either side. This one, there's two Jaegers that at one point fight each other, yet somehow they're able to walk away despite the fact that they did three times as much damage to each other than anything that was done in the first movie. That's the problem is that this film does take a different route but it's like a Power Rangers route. It's cool that they move differently, it's cool that some of them are very fast but I just didn't get the hulking ideal of these things. It just made me feel that they were just Transformers. Not very big because of how fast they move and the only time you ever remember how big they are is when they smash into a building. So aside from the somewhat subpar fight scenes, there are some good ones here and there, but then the very cliched and very non-creative directing kind of comes in and ruins it. The very off humor ruins it, except it seems when John Boyega does it. It doesn't seem bad, but otherwise the humor is very lacking. The kids are very annoying and very rudimentary. And in the end, it's, it gives you the sequel bait at the end. It's just like, oh, come on, guys. That was it? That's what you were working towards? So in the end, I'm going to give Pacific Rim Uprising a 2 out of 7.
And if you want to feel really bad, they had these posters giving out of the IMAX, which are not bad posters, but there was a pile of them when I went and saw it, and I thought, you know what, I'll leave them, and I'll just see if I can get some afterwards. The stack was still there, like a stack of 40 posters. Also, the theater I was in, on opening day, mind you, I think maybe it was not even a quarter full, and that's an IMAX theater. So that's unfortunate. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you liked this review. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Oh, by the way, a little bit of a milestone. We reached 900,000 views the other day. Cool. Anyways, that's all for me, guys. I'll see you next time.